Fecal incontinence in a form of a case scenario along with examination, investigation and management will be discussed today. 40 years old lady came to you with a fecal soiling of her trouser. How would you manage her? First of all, take detailed history about fecal incontinence. Ask whether her symptoms were provoked or unprovoked. Ask about its onset, whether it was spontaneous or gradual, its severity and amount. Is this her first visit or she visited before? How is her quality of life with her current problem? Is there any desire to defecate or not? Is she able to differentiate between the passage of wind or stool? Is the passage of stool or wind under her control or not? Any associated vaginal discharge? History of the chronic constipation or diarrhea? Previous history of prolapse? Certain differential diagnosis should come in your mind when you encounter a patient with a fecal incontinence. Ask about manual evacuation of the stool which occurs in fecal impaction. Because in fecal impaction, patient feels the need of further evacuation. Incomplete evacuation feeling is there. False smelling vaginal discharge is present in rectovaginal or rectovesical fistula. If the problem started after previous delivery, think about obstetric anal sphincter injuries. History of any trauma, injury or fall may indicate the spinal cord injuries. Any neurological problem like weakness of any part of the body indicate certain neurological problems. Dyspareunia or passage of air from vagina indicate any fistula like rectovaginal or rectovesical in this case. If patient gives history of any swelling or crack in the rectal area, think about hemorrhoids or anal fissures. History of weight loss, loss of appetite may indicate the rectal malignancy. Weight loss is also there in inflammatory bowel disease. Never forget to rule out diabetes mellitus. For that, ask about increased thirst, appetite and urination. History of fatigue, cognitive impairment and depression is there in multiple sclerosis. Ask about nausea, which may indicate inflammatory bowel disease. Also, in inflammatory bowel disease, patient may come with the um, presence of the blood in the stool as well. Then take the detailed obstetric history in which ask about the moods of the previous deliveries, any antenatal intrapartum or postnatal complications like 3rd and 4th degree perineal tear. Ask what were the sizes of the babies and any instrumentation was done or not. Was it prolonged labor or of normal duration? Any episiotomy was done or not? Ask about gynecological history like cervical screening. Take medical history like history of asthma and tuberculosis, the surgical history like history of colonic resection, the personal history of the smoking or the cancer, family history of any cancer. Take the detailed drug history like history of laxatives or radiations and also ask about the history of the drug allergy. Then check what investigations have been done so far and what management has been done so far like ha- um, has she got any steroids or immunomodulators or not after detailed history do the examination of the patient which starts from general physical examination including the vitals in which assess the level of the consciousness of the patient usually you may encounter an old frail lady with such problems do the systemic examination including the breast and the chest examination complete neurological examination including the sensation in the legs and feet for abdominal examination for any tenderness any visceromegaly do the perineal examination in order to check for rash scar marks skin changes excoriation or hemorrhoids do local examination for any stool soiling of her clothes do per speculum examination in which check for the health of the vagina and cervix plus check for any leaking. Do bimanual examination in order to assess the size, position and mobility and tenderness of the uterus. Do rectal examination. First of all, do inspection of the anal area for any injuries, fistula, bites or hemorrhoids. If fistula is suspected, do triple swab test. Do anal wink test by using cotton swab to check anal sensation and check anal tone. The investigations include first of all the baseline investigations. 
including blood group and RH factor, blood complete picture, including hemoglobin, total leukocyte count, total platelets count, the uh, hepatitis profile, including HBS antigen plus anti HCV plus anti HIV antibody, the random blood sugar two hours postprandial, and the midstream urine analysis. In patient with a fecal incontinence, also do complete stool examination for the presence of ova and parasites. In some patients, the nerve conduction studies are done if neurological problems are suspected. These nerve conduction studies help us to measure the delay in stimulation and contraction of the uh, potential nerve. Means contraction and stimulation of the muscles supplied by the potential nerve. The endoanal ultrasound help us to detect the sphincter or the structural defect. Anorectal manometry is used to check the control and uh, the strength of anal sphincter. In some cases, the fluoroscopy or fistulogram is done if rectovaginal fistula is suspected. In the management, first of all, debrief the patient regarding diagnosis, its implication and the plan of the management. Always remember to have sympathetic approach toward the patient as these patients are socially deprived and psychological support is needed to improve the quality of her life and also there is economic burden as well. Involve multidisciplinary team in the management of this patient including me as a gynecologist, the physician, the surgeon, the physiotherapist and the oncologist if malignancy is suspected and depending upon the diagnosis we made. The specific management include first of all the lifestyle modification. Advise the patient to clean the perineal area with the tape water. Advise her to avoid the tight underwear. Advise her the bowel diary and to maintain the toilet timing charts. Tell her that she needs to reduce the fiber diet and take healthy diet instead. And it would be better if she restrict her fluid intake to 1.5 liter per day plus cut down the caffeine fructose and lactose um, lactose etc advise her the pelvic floor muscle training and the kegel exercises which i will explain to you later after giving all these advices review her after three months here i will tell you a little bit about steps of doing the kegel exercises Instruct the patient to lay down on the floor with the knees bent. This will help her to locate her pelvic floor muscles. Next, ask her, tell her or instruct her to draw her pelvic floor muscles up and in. It should feel like holding the urine when she is feeling the desire to urinate. Next, Tell her that she needs to tighten her pelvic floor muscles for 3 seconds, then relax for 3 seconds. This is 1 Kegel. Repeat this until she has done 10 Kegels. Tell her the timings. Do Kegel once in the morning, once in the evening. 10 Kegel in the morning, 10 Kegels in the evening. After lifestyle modification, next comes the medical management. Silicon gel is prescribed to prevent excoriation. Also, uh, silicon has been found to increase the sphincter tone as well. In some cases, we advise the tablet lopiramide or imodium for diarrhea. Tablet codeine phosphate is suggested for diarrhea associated symptoms. Topical phenylephrine increases sphincter muscle tone. Next line of management is biofeed, which is in fact the real-time monitoring of the pelvic floor muscle. Here the stimulation of S3 and S4 level is done and the aim is to help to get greater strength of the sphincter muscles. In some situations, injection Botox is preferred, which helps to get greater strength of the sphincter muscles. In this specific management, if inflammatory bowel disease is diagnosed, then we would refer the patient to gastroenterologist. For stool impaction, laxatives might help. In case of the sphincter injury, first of all, refer the patient to colorectal surgeon. She might need sphincterotomy or sphincteroplasty. 
or in certain cases artificial anal sphincter is required when there is history of prolapse and we diagnose it on uh, clinical examination as well then posterior colpoperineal hafi may be the management line for hemorrhoids refer the patient to general surgeon she may need hemorrhoidectomy if gynecological surgeon is diagnosed refer the patient to mdt including colorectal surgeons in collaboration with a colorectal surgeon we may need further investigations like ct or mri for the further staging and for the management depend upon the staging some patient may need stoma colostomy or diversion which is in fact the last resort when all other measures including medical or surgical options failed the recent advances include vaginal balloon therapy also known as vaginal implant that can be inserted in the vagina and it has got a hodge pastry like structure uh, to get it fixed the other recent advances in severe cases also include posterior tibial nerve stimulation and the sacral nerve modulation after complete management such patient is advised to come after 6 to 12 weeks for follow up if you have any query or comment regarding this topic write in the comment section subscribe on obsend gaini allah hafiz